Amen. 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 May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever into the age all ages. Amen. <clears throat> Today is the Sunday of baptism, as uh, we call it, um, because in the early church, the catechumens would fast um, the whole 40 days of the Lent, and uh, on the night of the resurrection, they would be baptized and die and rise with Christ. But uh, later on, it was moved until today so they could attend the holy uh, events of the Passover and the um, Passion Week. Um, <clears throat> and if you notice, this gospel is also read another time of the year because of the theme of baptism. So after the Feast of the Epiphany, um, and there's much to talk about uh, relating to the events of today. So the gospel is according to uh, St. John, chapter 9. Um, and it's one of the seven, or some people call it, the eight miracles that are mentioned in this gospel. <clears throat> and the man of today was born blind, and he sought the Lord for healing and creation of the new pair of eyes. And when the Lord came to him, he was blind, but after he could see, after he went to the pool and washed and came back uh, seeing. <clears throat> On the contrary, the Pharisees, although they could see, they were rebuked by the Lord because of their inner blindness. And if you are here in the Matins Gospel, um, the Lord rebukes the Pharisees for um, their hypocrisy um, and their foolishness and, the, and their blindness. Um, <clears throat> so um, baptism is a sacrament when we become children of God and a temple of the Holy Spirit, but God opens our inner eyes for the eyes of our heart to see his kingdom, to know him more intimately, to have a new perspective on life. And that's why um, we call this Sunday the Sunday of the Baptism, um, because just like he opened the eyes of the blind, he can open my inner sight to see him and to know him. And though, although a lot of us are baptized, or most of us, um, one can find, follow themselves, find themselves fallen into the same um, type of blindness again if we're not watchful. Um, so baptism starts the process, but we need to interact with God's grace to continue our inner vision. As St. Augustine says, the sacrament had already taken place in his eyes, but the benefit of grace had not yet been achieved in his heart. So he was still, even he didn't know Christ until later. He didn't believe in him until after, because the Lord came to him and said, what? Do you believe in the Son of God? He said, who is he that I may believe in him? Is, is he who is who, who see and who's speaking to me? Then he said, I believe, and he worshiped. Right? So there was a process. Um, <clears throat> same thing with, with the Samaritan woman. There was a process. Um, same thing with us. Um, just because we're Baptists doesn't, doesn't mean we can see everything. Right? It's, it, it, it takes a life in order to go closer to God and to see and understand the things of God more clearly. Um, so today we'll just talk a little bit about the different things that might cause blindness um, or prevent us from knowing God better or understanding his will more clearly um, or feeling his presence in our life. So I need to ask myself, um, are any of these things preventing me from seeing God clearly in my life? So there's two main categories. The first category are um, the good stuff that I don't have, um, and the other category is the bad stuff that I might have. Okay. So the first category I call stuff because it just helps us remember um, spirit, tribulation, understanding, and faith. Okay. Of course, I know you spoke stuff with two Fs, but just for the sake of understanding. Okay. So um, the first point is. I could be blinded because I don't have the spirit. I don't have the sacraments. Um, like we said, the, the sacraments start with, with the outward action of them, but we have to interact with the sacraments throughout our life. And that's why we're talking about baptism, but we're all baptized, right? It's not just for the catechumens that we read this, but it's to renew the power of our baptism within us. So. The Holy Spirit, like we said, opens our eyes to see God clearly. He is the light of the world, right? And it's it's not just baptism, but also the continual repentance and confession and communion, especially, that helps open our eyes. Um, I know I mentioned this before, but the story of the Emmaus disciples, 
uh, that we read on the day after the resurrection in Luke 24. Uh, when did they see God clearly? After, after they took communion with him, right? It says it came to pass that he sat at table with them and he took bread, blessed and broke and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, right? And they knew him. Um, and then he vanished from their sight because they already saw and understood and tasted um, unity with him. <clears throat> so um, if I am not um, exercising the sacrament properly, it could be a reason why I don't see and understand and feel God's presence in my life, right? <clears throat> and of course, the people who are, who are not baptized, they have limitation. Um, but that doesn't mean we judge them, but we encourage them to come and taste and see uh, the sweetness of the Lord. <clears throat> so that's the first point, the spirit. The second one is because of lack of tribulation. Um, or we can say experience with God. Some people say, well, aren't we supposed to avoid tribulation? Um, or sometimes people face tribulation and they get further from God and they feel God is further from them. But um, that's not what happened with Job, right? That's not what happened with Tobit, as we read uh, two days ago. Um, <clears throat> so after, after the tribulation, Job says in chapter 42, he says, speaking to God, I have heard you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Um, therefore, I have poured myself and repent in dust and ashes. <clears throat> right. So the idea here is we hear God, we hear his word, but when do we see him? After we face a tribulation and we feel his presence with us. Right. Even maybe during the tribulation, we don't feel it as much as we should. We should have faith that we do, but it's, it's difficult. <clears throat> and then at the end, we see the grace of God that was always present. Same thing with Tobit. Um, he was blinded, but after the healing... He, he saw the angel of God, uh, Raphael, um, the archangel, appeared to them and revealed himself um, to them. So in our tribulations, we feel like we're in darkness. We feel like we're blinded by the, the light and, of the glory of God. But it's only for a time. Like even when, when it's nighttime, does that mean the st sun stops shining? Of course not. It's just shining in another place. And we are not um, privy to seeing the light of Christ. Same thing in our tribulations. You might be facing a, a dark period in your life, but Christ is there. Um, <clears throat> we just don't see it at the time. So, we, But we have to have faith that the sun is, is shining and God is good. Um, <clears throat> so that's the second one, uh, the second point. The third one is understanding. Um, and just like St. Paul says, uh, that the God, the God of glory can open the eyes of our understanding. Um, in, in Ephesians 1.18, he says the eye, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, right? And some people translate this the eyes of the heart or the eyes of the mind. Um, and also, uh, so hopefully, hopefully to remember this, Ephesians 1.18, also in Psalm 118, verse 18, um, the, the psalmist prays, open my eyes that, that I might see the wonder, wondrous things from your love. <clears throat> so when we learn more about God, learn more in scripture, learn more about how God has dealt with his people in the past, how he has dealt with the lives of the saints, I can be able to see more clearly how he is working in my life as well, right? Um, so this is a way where we need to convince our hearts um, of what we know in our minds. Or uh, I might know that God is there, and God loves me, but I need to, sometimes I don't feel it. So I need to convince myself that he does, right? And that's, that's what the scriptures are, are used for. That's what the lives of the saints are, are, how we employ them. That's how, like, sometimes we don't feel God, but we know he's there. It's okay, because the feelings will um, follow the, the thoughts. <clears throat> Okay, so, so again, the first point is that um, we're blinded because the lack of sacraments or participating in the sacraments properly. The second one is because we're not taking benefit of the tribulation enough. The third one is that we need to understand more things about God. Um, and that's why people that don't know, excuse me, they don't know about God, don't feel him and don't see him in their life, 
right? So sometimes with understanding, then their eyes become open. Um, and the, the fourth one is the lack of faith. And this is probably um, the most common out of all. Um, so the lack of faith can be present as fear or doubt or both. Um, so fear, for example, it causes blindness. And, uh, for example, there's a story in, in the second book of Kings with Elisha and his servant. And uh, the king had sent horses and chariots and a great army. Um, and they came by night and they surrounded the city. And when, uh, when Elisha arose, it says, and the servant, of the man of God, when he rose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said, alas, my master, what shall we do? So he told him, don't fear. <laughs> and then after this, um, he said, don't fear because those who are with us are greater than, than those who are with them. What do you mean? It's just two of us. Um, so he prayed, as it says, Elijah, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. He could see, but not with the eyes of faith. So after Elisha prayed this, the Lord opened the eyes of this young man and he saw and he saw the whole mountain full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Right? Sometimes we are like this young man. We only see two or one and say, where, where is God in this? I see the problem very clearly, but I don't see God. Um, <clears throat> so it needs prayer. And even if, if my prayer is not strong enough, I need to go into an Elisha and ask them to pray for me. And God will open my eyes that I could see that the army that is with me is stronger than the army that is with the devil. <clears throat> so that's the, the faith. <clears throat> the other part, the, like we said, is doubt. Um, we know the story of Mary Magdalene. Um, she saw the Lord with the eyes of her flesh, but not with, with, with faith, because she couldn't accept the concept of the resurrection. Um, and she doubted the resurrection, and she focused on the details of the, the disappearance of the body, assuming it was stolen, but the more interaction she had in conversing with the Lord, the resurrected Lord, um, and when, he heard, when she heard him call her by name, um, then she, she, she believed, and she saw. Um, <clears throat> so if I ask the Lord to give me more faith, then he will reveal himself more. And he could be standing right in front of me and might not realize. He could be right next to me in my problem, but I don't believe. Um, so it needs faith. Um, and, and with the faith, then I have confidence that no matter what happens, God is with me. Um, <clears throat> it, it takes a, a lot of, of, of faith and exercise and um, experience and not always succeeding the first time, but little by little, I'm able to trust in the Lord who has helped me um, in, in, the, in the past. <clears throat> so we need to believe in the Lord's love for us and, and to see how he works mightily in each one of our lives. Sometimes it's hard to have faith when it comes to the personal things. I can believe that God is love, but sometimes I doubt, does God really love me? Right? Um, I can understand the concept of forgiveness, but sometimes when it comes to a big sin, I, I can't accept God's forgiveness for me um, or to me. I can understand um, the sacrament of, of repentance and, uh, and confession or the sacrament of communion, but do I feel that God is one with me and that he has washed away my sins? That, that It's hard to make that connection sometimes. I could believe in the um, objective aspect of, 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 of the faith, but when it comes to my personal relationship with God, is, is that connection being made? Um, <clears throat> and so it, it, takes, it takes time. Um, and, and, and then through the experience, I have to look back and say, yeah, truly, um, it, God, God is with me, and God loves me, and God did forgive my sins. Um, <clears throat> so this is what needs the belief without sin. Um, so that's the first category, like we said. The second category is sin. And we don't have time to go into all of the different sins, but clearly um, the, the sin of the Pharisees of today 
and the people around of today, they, they were blind. <clears throat> and um, there's many different sins. So I, I need to ask, well, what, what is the sin in my life or the sins um, that are preventing me from seeing God and believing him and feeling his presence uh, more clearly? Um, for the Pharisees, it was hypocrisy, right? <clears throat> Um, sometimes it could be anger, anger. Like if I'm angry with others and I refuse to forgive them, then I can be blinding myself with the, from the light of Christ, right? If I'm judging them too much, then it's like instead of having the microscope to look inside of me, I'm using the lock binoculars to look at others, right? And and what are their sins? That's not that's not the concern of me. Is the sins of others, but the sins of mine are are the should be the concern. So I have to turn that. Um, that instrument for seeing, not far-sightedness, but for near-sightedness. Um, so I have to turn it to myself. Um, and, and this is what the Lord says: Don't look at the speck in your brother's eye, but the log that is in your eyes. First, remove the log from your eyes, and then you will be able to see clearly. Um, <clears throat> so this is hard, um, uh, but that's what the fast is for. That's what. Uh, the, the great Lent and the Passion Week is, is, is for saying, okay, God, I see this log clearly. Now please remove it uh, from me. Um, so it could be anger. It could be judging. It could be jealousy um, like Jacob's brothers were. It could be selfishness like Esau. Um, he was so focused on his hunger and, and his lunch, um, and it blinded himself of seeing the grace of God that he had, the, the, the blessing of, and the inheritance. Um, and he was quick to give it up why? because he wanted his lunch. Um, Judas was blinded by the love of money. He sold his master for, for nothing, uh, 30 pieces of silver. Um, <clears throat> so we need the Lord to give us the ability to change our vision. Um, the, the vision of the Christian is different than the vision of the worldly person. I need to blind myself to certain things. Um, of the world, so I can open my eyes to the things of the heavens. Um, <clears throat> because why? The things that we see are don't last, but the things that we see with the eyes of our heart, those are the things that last forever. Um, <clears throat> so um, when I start my day, I put on my glasses. I put on my glasses of Christ, so I see things the way Christ sees them. And I judge things the way he does, and I focus more inside than I do outside. Um, and by this, uh, this type of lifestyle, I'm able to see much, things much more clearly than, than before, um, even though I'm blinding myself to the unimportant things. Um, so may the God of all grace give us the ability to um, eliminate the things that... Um, prevent us from seeing him, um, to accept the idea of tribulation, to grow in understanding, to ask God to increase our faith that I may taste him, and to remove the barriers of sin that I may see him and that I may know him, that I may live with him forever. And glory be to the knowledge of the age of